All right. Um, I think first and foremost, just uh, personally, me personally, but also our team, just very, very appreciative. First, uh, the first group of the students that came out tonight, unbelievable turnout by them. Um, greatly appreciate that. And you can see what what an unbelievable environment they create for us. Um, you know, led by a lot of our uh, our players, peers, for, you know, other athletes and so forth, but the general students as well. It was fantastic. And then the, the rest of the crowd as well was, uh, was great. Um, you know, it's it was obviously a big game, but at the same time, I think, as I talked about before, we show glimpses of where we can get to and, and what type of environment we can have here, and I thought you saw that tonight. So appreciative. Um, Wish we could have played a little better in the second half, um, but Central Florida obviously had a lot to do with that. They're a very good basketball team, very balanced, uh, very experienced in terms of um, knowing exactly uh, what they need to get done. I thought we played well in the first half, not as good defensively as I would like, but at the same time really executed some good stuff offensively. They um, and they responded in the second half. Defensively, we weren't as good in the second half. We weren't as good on the glass. And when you play a team that's very good, uh, your offensive efficiency, when you get open shots and so forth, you, you got to you got to make them. You know what I mean? You just you got to make them. And uh, uh, in the second half, a little bit to their credit, but we missed some pretty good looks too. So, um, you know, we had a tough stretch now playing the four games against you know three out of the top four teams in the league um, and uh, I lost one in overtime uh, didn't compete as well as we should down in, in Orlando did a much better job today and so we just gotta you know get a day off and get back to work and get ready to go on the road and uh, play UConn on Sunday. As, as far as this program has come since last season is it tonight like the night tonight kind of an indication of the work that needs to still be done here. Oh yeah, we got a long way to go. You know, to get better every single day, it's, it, it's one, it's a daily process. Two, it's slow, you know, and three, it's hard. Um, and the problem, the challenge is, is you gotta be, you know, I mean, I just saw a thing, you gotta be relentless in it every day and you gotta be able to keep doing it when you don't see the tangible results because you do it every day. You don't see it on a daily basis. You know, you got to look back. If our team three months ago would have played this team tonight, we would have not been able to compete with them. So we've improved. Um, at the same time, we got a long way to go. You know, we got a long way to go. Uh, have we made dramatic improvements? Yeah, but we're not, we're not quite good enough to beat those teams yet. We can compete with them, but we're not quite good enough to beat them yet. And the key word in our program is yet. Coach, we, we'll get do? there. What do, you, what do you have to do to compete with, with the top four teams? Uh, you said improvement. What improvements need to be made? Well, you, 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 you know, you got to take care of the ball better. We got to shoot better from the free throw line. Um, you know, you can't have some, some we got to rebound the ball better like tonight. And again, it's not, it's never one thing. You know what I mean? What you do is you get good enough to compete, and then you get good enough to beat them every once in a while. And then when you're really good, you're, you're beating them on a consistent basis. And the consistency part is, is a big step in that. And, um, you know, sometimes there's no better teacher than experience. We don't have a lot of that, especially in comparison to, to Central Florida. Um, but at the same time, you know, you give them, you, you got to give them credit. They got to the free throw line 29 times. We're one of the best at getting to the free throw line more than our opponent. And we didn't do that tonight. Um, you know, our goal is to hold teams of under 42% from the field. We've done a very good job of that all year long. We didn't do that tonight. Uh, our, our goal is to be plus five on the glass. We didn't do that tonight. So none of our daily or our game goals did, were we able to achieve tonight. And when we do that, we, we've been able to compete with anybody. You know? does, does that team we played tonight, does that look like an NCAA tournament team? No, no, no. 
that is an NCAA tournament team. Right now, we have four in our in our league, and and Memphis is playing, and looks like one as well right now. I don't know if we'll get five in, but that team's in, that team's that sec could be a second weekend team. You know what I mean? Houston's a Final Four caliber team. Cincinnati's a second weekend, and once you get into second weekend, then you become a Final Four team. And I've been through it. All you got to play two really good games. You know, and then once you get into the Sweet 16, it's anybody. Anybody can get to the Final Four once you get in there. You've coached quite a while. Your impressions of Taco? He's just, he's really, he, he's hard to guard. You got to scheme offensively against him, and I thought we did a very good job of that. One positive coming out, I think our big guys and us as coaches now, I think we can stretch the court a little bit more. I have a little more comfort level with our five men shooting a little bit further out. I thought they did a great job. One thing is, he's really hard to officiate. He's really hard to officiate. So what was your plan going into the game to deal with Taco? We just needed to fight him at every chance that we could get, and I thought our guys did a pretty good job of that. You can't go in and say, okay, you're going to front him, because then they're going to play over the top, or you're going to play behind, and he's going to get you so buried you can't guard him. You know, We have a, a, a sled that we use um, to work on lower body strength, and we just, it's a 300 pound sled drill, is what you, you got. You got to get underneath them, and you got to just shove them out of there as much as you can. And you hope you get some fouls when he turns into you or when he displaces you, and it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard, hard guy to play against, it's a hard guy to officiate against. Um, I thought we did a much better job, even though we didn't shoot, you know, we did a much better job of attacking him attacking their defense this game than we did last game. He just suddenly became a much better free throw shooter tonight, right? Yeah. yeah no, no, you know, here, here's the thing. So, I mean, you guys are getting to know me. You give him credit. I guarantee that guy's worked his ass off at the free throw line. You give him credit. That's not luck. That, I've known that kid. We, I recruited him at Georgia Tech when he was a junior in high school. He's, a, he's an unbelievable kid, and he's a hardworking kid. And... He doesn't probably get the credit he deserves because you just think about how big he is. You know what I mean? Um, Physics-wise, I don't know how that ball goes in. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, he's, he's worked on it. But Jamal Wilkes, how did his jump shot go in? Yeah. For you old guys out there, so you young guys don't even know who the hell wow. he is. <laughs> you know what I mean? So but, Jesus. But, I mean, that's – you, you, you got to give him credit. I said it after that. He's a much improved player. Why? He's in better condition, so he can play longer. He's stronger. He catches the ball better, and he moves better. And it, now, he's, you know, he can make just enough free throws where he can't just – and the thing I said, you know, somebody says, well, you follow him every game, every time. Well, the problem is if you do that, now you're in the bonus so early, Every time Taylor drives, now he goes to the free throw line and he's an 80% free throw shooter. You know what I mean? So you can't do that either. Can this, I mean, the football teams, the football programs have kind of forged this rivalry. This is going to be a hell of a rivalry. What tells you that? Because we, the two coaches have an unbelievable amount of respect for each other. They do it the right way. He's going to get good players that play hard. We're going to get good players that play hard. So that's, I mean, it's, a, it, it's going to be, it's going to be great, you know what I mean? And I, you know, I, I, he's, he's an unbelievable guy, Johnny is. So I want them to be successful. You know, we'll go to, we'll, we'll battle on the recruiting trail and twice a year, or maybe three times a year, we'll try to beat the hell out of each other. You know what I mean? And that's, that's, that's when you have a good, you know, good, you know, good rivalry where there's the respect there as much as the com competitiveness. You guys, you mentioned stretching the floor earlier. And Antoon did a really good job of that, I think, with the two three-pointers. Yep. So did Michael. Yep. Can you talk about what those guys were able to do in, in stretching the floor a little bit? Yeah, I give them credit. They put, you know, they, they put in a lot of work, you know, and um, they, they were aggressive to, to shoot. There was no hesitation, which was good. So I think um, we got to be comfortable with that down the, down the road in terms of that being a – Option and what we're in what we're doing, um, and I thought we really shared the ball well in the first half. We had that ball moving, you know, pretty good. So um, 
you know, we, we just we got to have some guys, you know, it, it, in this league, at this level, you, you can't have just two or three guys play good. You got to have more guys play better. Coach, what did you see up do in that first stretch of the second half that you couldn't keep up with? You know, we, we, we uh, um, Dawkins got loose twice. Uh, we had two missed coverages that gave up threes on that. Um, one three by uh, Taylor. Um, and we missed some shots and they got put us defensively on our, on our heels. So now a three-point game gets up to 12 or 10. Um, and we did, be, when you do that now, now you're always kind of battling uphill. And now every offensive possession becomes so important. Everyone becomes big. Um, and you can't give them any, any second shots. And we did that in the second half. We gave up an offensive rebound on a free throw, which, as I said many times, as you guys know in our program, that's like a mortal sin, and we, you know, we work on it, but we gotta, we we just gotta, we gotta get more consistent in in some of those things. Would you say that stretch was the difference in the game? Yeah, no question about it, Coach, no doubt about it. Yep. Sorry, if that's you look right. up, and this was the second, um, excuse me, the first highest attendance in this building since 2012. What does that do for your guys? You know, an increased uh, student section as well. Well, first, and, and I should have said it early. You got to give a ton of credit to our marketing department. They've been beating the trails. They've been out there working their tail off. Um, one, we have a better product to sell. Uh, two, we got you know good guys that are that are um, you know they're in class, they're walking around campus and stuff like that, and they're good guys, so that helps. Um, but you know, like I said, hopefully it's a glimpse of where we can get to as we continue to, to, to grow and build uh, our program. And, and hopefully that will be a, a nightly occurrence. You know what I mean? Um, when I envision the program that we're going to build here, that's, I see that. I see you know, those type of crowds on a, on a nightly basis. Is it almost kind of like a culture change, would you say? Just uh, in terms of the whole university. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and I, I'm always careful when I talk about cultural changes or cultural shifts because, you know, people sometimes get the idea that the old culture was no good. I'm not here to, I, I can't worry about that, you know what I mean? Uh, but there is a culture that we want to create. I'm not saying that's better. There's a lot of different ways to win. There's a lot of different ways to build a program. Um, I, we have a clear vision of how we want to do that. Um, and I, I think the one, the best thing for me is from the administration, from the president to the athletic director to our marketing, everybody's on board with that vision and that's how you do it. Because what you have to do, you have to have things in place before you get really good. You know what I mean? And no one thought we were going to be any good. So they had all this stuff in place already when they thought we were going to be last in the league. So you got to give them credit for their, in, you know, vision forward and, and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, we've helped because we're better than that, you know. So, um, but if you wait till you get really good, then it's too late. You got to capture it before it, and so when you get good, you're ready to take off. And we're and we're working and we're getting there. We're getting there. Guess anything else? All good. All right.